Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host Dan, aka smash o mash and I'm showing off some new stuff today. We'll get to it. We saw a brief period of geomagnetic unrest sparked by that coronal mass ejection. It's still sort of striking the magnetosphere right now, and that puts us on at least a 24-hour earthquake watch. I would not say the coronal mass ejection is complete yet, but we're at, at least 20-hour earthquake, 24-hour earthquake watch rather, caused by this. We're starting things out here looking at the 94 Angstrom's 48-hour SDO video. Sunspot 2767 there in the lower left did produce a small B-class flare around 1600 right there. Couldn't even really see it on the 94 Angstrom's view. And let's look at some more images here. I just wanted to show you something for perspective real quick. So here's the magnetic field. And we don't see any trailing umbrae. So that's still just an alpha class sunspot. It didn't degrade a whole lot. I think it shrunk a little bit since yesterday. Here's 304 angstroms. Also, we see a coronal mass ejection likely to blast out of this area, I believe. It could be this filament up here, actually, also. And we're going to show you something from, from the perspective of perspective. So here's the 171 angstroms view again. I just wanted to show you. So here's the Earth scale. All right, you can see how big that sunspot is. The magnetic field is about the same size as the Earth right here. I just wanted to show you how huge these coronal mass ejections are in terms of Earth scale. So when we're looking at the view from Stereo A, and again, we do see some evidence that there's another coronal mass ejection about to build and release. When we go back to this view, you see how small the Earth is? on that view. Now, what you're looking at when you look at Stereo A is a view on this sort of a perspective. I should use the C2. There you go. That is how small the Earth is on that perspective. So when we see these coronal mass ejections coming out, they are very large. And, you know, when we see prominences on the Sun, and we're looking directly at the Sun, that is a completely different story than how big these things are when they fully propagate, as these cameras have to be very specifically focused in order to get these images, which is why we have the coronagraphs, which show us just the corona, obviously. Anyway, here's the view from Stereo A, the C2 coronagraph out at Stereo A. You can see another set of plasma building up here, and... Uh, Right at the very end, you can see it brighten up there, kind of at the sun side of it, and that's typically an indication that there is a coronal mass ejection about to happen. So another coronal mass ejection forecasted according to me. Let's look at some close-ups here, custom Helio Viewer movies of Sunspot 2767. There's 304 angstroms. Some great views of that filamentary activity associated with that ionized helium emission spectra. And then here you've got the 171 angstroms view. Shows you great uh, potential field force lines associated with ionized iron. Great view there of sunspot 2767. At the same time, that we're getting struck. So the 10.7 centimeter radial flux has remained at 70 solar flux units. There you have a graph going back to September of 2017, the last time we saw it above 90. So coming off of solar minimum and seeing uh, the last couple of days here at 70. Radio flux is a proxy for sunspot number, by the way. Very closely following sunspot number in terms of solar activity. And there you can see that moment of KP of 4, the geomagnetic index of 4. So. Those incoming protons did cause a bit of a stir. And again, there's that small solar flare we saw. X-ray photons in the B-class range around, uh, what is that, 1700? Around 1740 yesterday. That's universal time for you new viewers. 
And we don't see a significant rise in the proton flux generated with that coroma mass ejection as forecasted. And, you know, it's not really that big of a surprise there uh, as it wasn't all that dense and it was uh, a bit on the slow moving side. I had a lot of time to dissipate. And we'll be keeping an eye on this. Uh, it doesn't look like it's quite complete yet. I believe the single best signal we get of it was this right here. When we see this temperature suddenly rise at the same time and then a small rise in both the velocity and the density, kind of like the graph that I drew to demonstrate what it would look like when it strikes. So cheers. I mean, what can you say? You can't be right all the time, but you can be right very often if you're broadcasting to this channel. We did see the phi angle suddenly and precipitously shift here, but those are both pretty close to the 360 mark as 0 and 360 are practically the same in radians, right? Because we're talking about degrees here with phi angle, so that's not really anything significant. Solar wind density made it up to a little under 20 protons per cubic centimeter, now at 10.5 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed 368 kilometers a second. And let me get to the next pane and not be a pain. And here's the uh, geospace magnetosphere movie, and you can see all that magnetohydrodynamic pressure associated with that incoming coronal mass ejection at the same time, actually, as there's a coronal hole wind stream. It's a pretty weak and diffuse coronal hole wind stream as well, but the combined effort has created quite a bit of pressure. We don't really see anything particularly interesting in the velocity or the density, or we'd show you. We do see some significant ground magnetic perturbations, and we'd be unsurprised to see some auroras. If you're in aurora-ready locations, perhaps go out and have a look, especially if it's dark. We're coming at you quite late today, making the video after it's light out for once, here in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Next, ground magnetic perturbations, and you can see quite a bit of induced magnetism here and lots of stuff going on on a global scale so again have an earthquake plan folks if you're in an earthquake prone zone try to have a way to be an asset not a liability when buildings start to fall if they start to fall know which ones will fall if you can't put together a bug out bag for instance there's four hours of data we're going to look at the at the polar regions also here and we often see the incoming field-aligned currents making this appear like a spiral. Not really too big of a surprise there as yeah, we see some, some snapping there. Look at the snapping happening right here. Where was that? Right there. It looks like the field shut off. Poof. And we do see a heliospheric current sheet crossing taking a long time so we were part of the reason why we probably see so much geomagnetism from such a weak diffuse coronal hole wind stream is because of the heliospheric current sheet polarity crossing you get snapping back and forth into some neutral zones there and uh, it could be a glitch in the model or that could be some real measurements folks it's all according to the space weather modeling framework if you want to read about that come to this page click on details and you can get all the information about that how it's calculated for this model Here's the forecast for auroras. And we'll just let that play through. And I will be right back. As I need a beverage. All right. Anyway, there are the auroral forecasts for Borealis and Australis. And welcome to another Smash Lights. This one's going to be very short as there's too many other things to cover. FDA warns at least 77 brands of hand sanitizer may be toxic. Thanks, HuffPo. Don't try to drink methanol. And in fact, don't try to drink ethanol either. Uh, don't drink your hand sanitizer, folks. Um, don't put it all over your mask before putting your mask on your face. Uh, methanol can absorb through the skin, by the way. Uh, which makes it some very uh, inappropriate hand sanitizer. So be aware of which chemicals are around you and don't expose yourself to ridiculous chemicals. 
or do ridiculous things like burn down buildings. Um, not really a fan of arson attacks, despite all of the. Well, you 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 get you get the you, you know you sort of understand what I'm saying there. Anyway, Democratic Party headquarters in Arizona has been completely ruined by a, a apparently an intentional arson attack. Now, I know the Bernie bros were stating that they were going to cause all kinds of destruction if Bernie did not get the Democratic nomination. And frankly, I don't blame them because of the candidate that they did nominate. It seems absolutely insane. Uh, at least Bernie is coherent in a room and able to compose a sentence off of teleprompter. In related news, Barack Obama has no coattails and continues to have no coattails. I'm not surprised because Barack Obama can also not compose a coherent sentence off of teleprompter. Please don't burn down buildings, as it's not going to cure racism. As racism is a thing, just not systemically speaking, in my opinion, in the U.S. Now, of course, there probably are some some hick town podunk police forces where the whole police force is, is racist. I imagine it's probably entirely possible. But I wouldn't say that there are... Uh, significant systemic number of police chiefs out there going, hey, make sure you screw over minorities. Let's talk about incompetence. We've uncovered some incompetence in where I'm located, and I won't mention names here on the Daily Space Weather videos, but um, it's getting ugly, and there are conflict of interests, and it's, it's, all I can say is, ew, 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 gross. By the way, if you have to battle your local government, please keep in mind that those people are, they tend to be hacks who don't know anything, and they're paid, you know, six figures to tell you what's a weed and what's a hedge. Just, uh, just saying. Just generally speaking, of course. If you haven't headed to smashamash.com slash forum, check it out. And um, we've got a movie recommendation section here in the free-for-all forum, and we're trying to get people to post movie recommendations. Apparently it's a major a major uh, thing to ask um, to post these, so please put a movie pick in there. Maybe give us a little review. If you're going to include spoilers, put them at the beginning. Or put the fact that there's going to be spoilers at the beginning and let us know a movie pick. Um, I don't think we have any anybody posted. Nobody's posted in this thread besides me, despite having a one pick from Eugene Bagashov, which is... Uh, Little Miss Sunshine, 2006. I don't know if it's good. I have no idea. Hubble's got a new picture of Saturn. If you want to check it out, head to space.com. Yes, space.com. It's a thing. By the way, we are tweeting tweeting live to Stretch. Streaming live to Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash smashomash. We're also on YouTube, obviously. And if you haven't taken a moment to press like and subscribe over there, tell your friends, tell your foes, tell your science noobs and your science pros. Welcome to the neo-renaissance as astrophysics is getting rewritten. Really all of science is getting rewritten. As we approach 200 subs on BitChute and we receive hundreds and hundreds more views per day over there, we thank our patrons. The real source of funding, and by the way, there are now nine tiers over on Patreon. Nine. So the existing ones are still there, and now there are more. And uh, one of them even includes classified benefits. So if you'd like to check that out and consider supporting the channel, please do so at patreon.com slash smashomash. That's patreon.com slash smashomash. The real source of funding for this content. The people who are making it more likely that these videos will remain public and free for all to see. We're also on Subscribestar, and there are other links below the video. Please support the channel. And please support me saying, for you can... To that thing that Made it chatter, it's made of chatter, it's made of cheap plastic, it's from chatter, and we're going to have the most beautiful, the most amazing, the most fantastic, just the most unbelievable people on the job creating the most amazing, beautiful, fantastic vaccines that you've ever seen in your life, okay? And this virus, again, made it chatter, out of cheap plastic from chatter. Congratulations on surviving a global pandemic, so far. And I don't know if you've, if you've seen, but... Smasher price my first pandemic. It's now a thing, folks. Check it out. There you go. I'm wearing the prototype. 
and we're going to be offering these later today or tomorrow. Asking price is expected to be 25 bucks plus shipping, but that's not set in stone. So look for that coming soon. If you need to contact us for any sort of breaking news stories, or if you want to send us a photograph, for instance, send us a, a text message on Smash O V O I P line. It's country code plus one, area code 610-936-9799. Country code one, area code 610-936-9799. And we put a lot of nines in there on purpose. And thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Smash Light segment. And let's move on to more stuff. Next, looking at the Ghost magnetometers, at least one magnetometer, it's the Ghost 16. And we may be crossing back and forth through the current sheet here, folks. These are, these look like current sheet polarity crossing events. And I think we've snapped back and forth between north and south polarity several times over the past uh, 24 hours, I'll say 36 hours. And um, that is partially my explanation for some of the geomagnetic unrest, again, because we didn't see very high proton levels or velocities in the solar wind. So it's chiefly a magnetic event here, just being timed at the same time as a coronal mass ejection on a coronal whole wind stream. And when you get all three, you've got triple witching for all you investors out there who understand what that means. We won't get into it today as we're not doing economics in today's Daily Space Weather video. And you can see it's not entirely positive whether or not we're in the North Pole current sheet. And it looks like there's some more activity rising here out in the vicinity of Stereo A. You can see some highly organized plasma out there in that region as well. And the line of sight field plot is looking similar to how it did yesterday. You can see the B field moving a bit toward that sunspot and losing a little bit of its symmetrical shape. Keep in mind the magnetic environment can suddenly change. Next, looking at electrons, here's a one-year graph, and we see the electrons bottom out there as that coronal hole wind stream and coronal mass ejection strike, and you can see these long periods of very low electron flux. No surprise there. There are more electrons out there, though. We'll get to that later. And we see some big-time electron anomalies here. And these were not here when I did show prep, but they're there now. And you see big-time anomalies in the southern hemisphere there over the Antarctic continent. So your GPSs could be off by thousands of miles in those areas. You can see that little signal right there. And that is a, that's, that's not any kind of a measuring error or anything, folks. That clearly looks like legit electron flux there. Check it out. That's an extreme anomaly, and you're talking probably hundreds of miles of, of error on your GPS if you're on a ship in that region there. Again, this shows the whole air column for your new viewers out there who have never seen the daily space weather. This covers the whole air column all the way up to the thermosphere, and it helps to predict GPS errors. The ionosphere is also extremely anomalous, and so earthquake risk is very high, despite that 7.8 magnitude quake striking in the Aleutian Islands. I don't believe that that has anything to do with, quote, relieving pressure, end quote, especially in light of a lot of new geophysics information. So while we don't see a massive proton event, it is a bit of a proton event here, folks, regardless. And when you see the electrons crater out like that, that's what we call electron light. That's what I call electron light. And uh, yeah, so the ionosphere is quite anomalous here once again. And let's bring up the latest image. There's 945, and you can see it's kind of wobbly. It's charging and discharging in an anomalous fashion. You can see it's you can see it's kind of discharged up here above the equator where it's summertime, and you can see it's oddly discharged in some places at nighttime, and and so on. So there you go. That's six hours of data there. In the moving picture, here's where stuff is in the solar system as we move out of the Jupiter-Saturn orientation. And there's where things will be in a week, approaching another full moon as we ramp up our activities. Here is what's going on above my head. I like to have a star chart available. I like to use in-the-sky.org. If you get up before dawn, 
you might be able to catch a glimpse of Venus and Mercury and Mars all at once. And the sun is just on the horizon. Check it out. If you're up earlier than that, you should be able to see Jupiter and Saturn as well. All kinds of storm warnings showing up here on weather.gov. And we see flash flood and hurricane warnings. Or oh, Wait a minute. Those are... Uh, what is that? What is that color, folks? Is it a red flag warning? So they're getting flood advisories. Anyway, there's a tropical system about to rarely strike uh, Hawaii. So the earthquake risk goes up there, actually. And uh, we've got some heat advisories and so on. And as well as uh, the first time getting these kind of flood warnings for the Texas Gulf Coast in about three years. So about a thousand days since we've seen those sorts of tropical storm warnings. Here's what we're talking about. We've put up a total accumulated precipitation forecast via the GFS model on Tropical Tidbits. Shout out to Tropical Tidbits. Drop me a line. And here's, uh, so this is, um, that's where things will be Tuesday at 6 Zulu. And that's, uh, that's showing about 20 inches of rain there in the, in the southern tip of Texas. A very concentrated area looks like it's going to get hit. Let's move on to volcanoes. What's erupting now includes Nishinoshima. 15,000 foot ash plume there. Suwanuse Jima. Flight level 060 there. Samaru exploding. Flight level 140 there. That means 14,000 feet of altitude. And shout out to Brett. We're glad to hear that you're feeling better and that they didn't kill you in the hospital. Hopefully you won't have to file a malpractice suit, but if you do, you do. We hope you become rich and famous. Or rich and not famous, I guess you'd probably prefer. Popocatépetl is also exploding down there in Mexico, producing a 24,000-foot plume. Sangue, 20,000-foot plume there as it explodes. <clears throat> Revenador, flight level 160 as it explodes, and Sabankai also exploding flight level 230. Please do not attempt to pole vault the caldera. It could prove unhelpful. We did see an earthquake here in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Let's go down the list of the past 24 hours of earthquakes. Deep quake strikes the Philippines. Let me take a moment to say, heads up if you're in these areas. There is an increased earthquake risk as a result of a coronal mass ejection strike on the magnetosphere. So over the next 24 hours, yeah, Cascadia fault zone as well. Please have an earthquake plan. If buildings start to fall, understand what you'll do, what may happen. Have a bug out bag if you can. Know which building facades may collapse if you're in a city and you're going to run outside and there's an old statue that looks like it's already fallen down. Try not to be under it. Something as simple as that could save your bacon. Or your sour cream and onion and chives. Who knows? And let's scroll up the list here, citing any other oddities. Here's a deep quake in Russia on the Kamchatka Peninsula. Large quake in Cuba, 5.1 there. We usually only report on 6 plus magnitudes. And deep quakes, here's a deep quake in Japan. It's a 4.3 at 172 kilometers. That's the kilometers of depth, by the way. And just going up the list, going up the list. There's an odd one in Northwest Territories, Canada. Not your everyday spot for a quake. There's another deep quake in Papua New Guinea. It's only a 4.7 magnitude, but it's at 175.4 kilometers depth. Another deep quake in the deep quake capital of the world near Fiji, a 4.4 magnitude at 572 kilometers. And there's the end of that list. We see a bunch of lightning strikes once again in the terrestrial U.S. Let's let people know where Thunder's rolling in. Hey, Sioux City. Hey, Wakefield. You're surrounded. I like to use lightningmaps.org when I hear Thunder. It gives me a much better idea of where lightning strikes are. It's a real-time lightning map. And yes, you can forecast thunder with it. You can freak out your foes and impress your friends. Here's windy.com's pressure maps. 
And you can see this, number one, this low pressure striking Hawaii, this low pressure striking southern Texas and Mexico. Let's let this advance into the GFS forecast. There's where things will be at 11 a.m. my time tomorrow. I would also note this stagnant low here. It's quite significant. It's just hanging out there south of the Aleutian Islands. That's the kind of anomalous low system that could be associated with earthquake activity. If you see that start to do weird stuff, well, it could be time for the Earth to start shaking. Let's hope not. Next, looking at the jet streams here on nullschool.net. To see extreme radiant jet stream flow, to say the least. And the jet stream's flowing backwards around these areas. Yep, it's just flowing backwards. Major kinks in the jet stream down here also, pulling extremely warm air way down into the southern jet. And let's look at the eastern world. There are the eastern world's jets. Major bends in a jet stream down south and extremely incoherent jet stream flow, almost as incoherent as code enforcement officers. Look at that incoherent jet stream flow there. Man, oh man, ask a pilot. That's not normal. And look at the kinks in the southern jet stream all over the place. Let's check out flight level or the 10 hectopascal, the ultra-high pressure wind. And you can see a doubled up cyclonic setup down there. And we'll return to the flight level 250 and move on. Looking at water vapor maps for Europe and Africa. Water vapor maps for the Far East and Oceania. Water vapor maps for the Americas. And how about the cloud cover? Here's cloud cover for the U.S. region. And we're going to zoom in on that landfalling tropical system here as we see some very interesting waves as it moves over a uh, surface low. You can see this wave-like structure come out of the front of it. Looking like a shock wave. And we don't see a big kink in the jet stream here from this. Um, and there's a bunch of forces that are looking to weaken it. Anyway, let's look at the, uh, the uh, U.S. Doppler radar map. Now we have some artifacts down there in the Gulf. Don't freak out about that. It's not a chemtrail. It's not an alien spacecraft. It's an artifact of data that is tied together to make it look coherent. Almost like the way your local government likely functions. <laughs> All right, enough enough cracks about your local government. It might be incompetent, it might not be. Who knows? It might be very competent. <coughs> I doubt it. Anyway, there's a close-up of that system. That's stagnating for a moment. And let's take a look at the water vapor map, and you can see that indeed there is some dry air south of it, which will not help it to strengthen although the dry air north of it will help it to stagnate. So the jet stream is having some influence here, and it's causing this mass of air to come down like this. And so it's going to take its good old time, and that's why you're going to get such concentrated rain. And we'll zoom in on a close-up of this to give you an idea of what that system looks like close-up. And there's the best view we'll likely show you of it today. Great view of that system there. And again, this dry air south of it is beneficial for those of you who don't want more rain. As these things feed on hot, moist air. And thanks, Smash Team, for tuning in. Allow me to vanish. Shut up. Thanks for leaving comments. Be stoic. And Sparsons127. Yes, it does look like there is a sunspot on the backside. I didn't really look at it. 
But thanks for letting us know. 173 Angstroms is a win. Maybe we'll cover it tomorrow. Maybe not. Thanks for flying American Smashways. Remember, keep your head and arms inside the Smash Plane at all times. Look for our t-shirt offer coming out soon. It's probably going to be on Teespring, but don't tell anybody. Here's the latest image of Sunspot 2767. It looks like it's weakening to me. And here's a, the latest image of the magnetic fields. Let me just let that load. I'm going to bring up 335 Angstrom's 48-hour video. And there are the fields. And we never saw this develop into any umbrae. That's been an alpha-class sunspot the whole time. Significant size, uh, but not a lot of activity. Only one B-class flare came out of it so far. It's something to keep an eye on. And when I say eye on, oh, well, the pun is intentional, darling. Anyway, we're out. Possible second video later today. We're not sure. Remember, stare at the sun. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Head to smashamash.com slash forum and give us your movie recommendations. You could even put a review. It's fine. If you include spoilers, let us know first. And this isn't loading, so I'm loading my legs and getting out of this chair and getting out of here. May that solar wind be at your back and that Covidia see absent from your multiverse. Check it out, y'all. Smasher Price, my first pandemic. Are you over 102 years old? Have you survived another pandemic? <laughs>